Hello, good morning and welcome to day two here at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. What an incredible day of incredible, incredible swimming action we had yesterday. Did I say it was incredible? I think I did because it was. It was very, very good. Now, up to date here, we'll be keeping you live with all the updates, all the actions, the heats, the semi-finals and the finals of every swimming race. Now, I'm not here alone for the rest of the event. No, no, I'm joined here by two times world champion and a Olympic silver medalist. It is, of course, the lovely Kerry Ann Payne. Yeah. Kerry Ann, <laughs> welcome again to day two. Talk to me about day one. Well, yesterday was just such a great bang into this competition. So we had a British record from James Guy. We had another British record from uh, from Matthew w Wiley. So it's just so nice to see so many people breaking British records and there were all, a lot of world-class swimmers yesterday which is great. On the opening day as well of the competition is always great for the profile isn't it of the of the yeah. event and for the swimmers to give them that confidence moving forward for the rest of the event because we're going to see James Guy later on today aren't we? Yes yeah, so he's got the 200 free today and it's um, it's a it's a strange event because they're all wanting to be that 200 freestyle they want to be in the individual but it's also a relay event today so the top four might be selected who knows we'll have to wait until the end of the week to find out that that, but there's a lot of places up for grabs today. There are indeed. Now, who, who are you looking out for this morning? Because we've just been having a, a quick chat and there's a lot of names into the mix, isn't there? Yeah, so today I think actually I'm looking forward to seeing how people back up from yesterday. So we've got Michael Jameson, he's backing up the 200 with the 100 today. And then we've also got um, James Guy, so he did the 400 yesterday, now he's going to have to back that up with the 200 today. And Fran Housel as well in the 50 freestyle, which is kind of the blue ribbon event of, uh, of swimming, as, as people say. It's the splash and dash, the fastest person in the pool and she did the hunter fly yesterday so she'll also have to back up that swim with a really great 50 freestyle today because we're talking about the the swimmers obviously from yesterday moving forwards today and for the six days of the competition there's a lot of swimmers competing in a lot of events yeah. and we're you know seeing the the semi-finals and finals as well as the heat so how are these swimmers going to be resting and preparing obviously it's something that they're used to yeah. um, but a lot of people you know will be asking the question how are they recovering because it's intense isn't it this yes yeah, so we train all year round pretty much we only get a couple of weeks off a year as as swimmers so we do train our bodies to be able to do this to be able to handle coming to competition and doing lots of races so someone like Siobhan Marie O'Connor she doesn't have as much of a rest as everybody else has so her rest is a lot shorter because she has so many more events to do here so we are trained and we are prepared this is just about going through that process everything's done there's nothing else that we can do now it's just a case of getting in and doing the business and from a coach's point of view what sort of advice will they be giving just the, the more the psychological advice yeah. of this the hype for the event this the heat then there's the semi-finals yeah. and the finals what will the coach advice be to the swimmers well I think it'll be just calm down just relax like I know you're excited I know you want to swim really well but it's the first day you know it's a marathon not a sprint <laughs> just you know just relax calm down and then try and enjoy yourself which is what a lot of these competitions are about it's you know we get up at five o'clock every morning so this competition is about enjoying yourselves and obviously you're enjoying yourself as well being on the yeah. other side of the pool being here it's great to, to have you here and as I said earlier well Kerry Ann will be with us for the rest of the event as well but now it's needless to introduce Ross Davenport and Bob Ballard who are going to be giving you all the commentary for all of the races so let's take it away Bob and Ross <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Kerry Ann. Good morning. Welcome to Glasgow. Day two here in Tall Cross of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Very exciting and enjoyable session we had last night. Plenty of good times, plenty of great results, plenty of happy swimmers is what we want to see, and hopefully plenty more of that today. You will see lots of names that you'll already be 
acquainted with from last night. We will see Michael Jameson, we'll see Adam Peaty, we'll see James Guy, uh, we'll see Fran Halsall, plenty of the big names, but no bigger a name is there in British swimming. The man sitting alongside me, who is, incidentally, and I'll be saying this maybe for a little bit longer, the English record holder in the 200 metres freestyle. Good morning, Ross Davenport. Good morning, Bob. It's a pleasure to be here yet again. We had a fantastic evening last night. There's not many times now, in, in, certainly after the suit era, that we see British records. And James Guy came and smashed it last night in the 400 metres freestyle. He's going to back that up this morning with the 200 metres freestyle. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. No doubt he'll be very sore and tired from last night's exertion, but you know, he's young enough and he's quite. And the, oh, uh, Roberto Fern is dad in the crowd. But yeah, I think he's, he's a world-class swimmer, James Guy, and I think he's got he's got all the tools in his in his locker to, to really be world-class and really push certainly towards the, the, the top end of the events from the international scene. Here we go to the first of the heats for the morning. We have seven of them in the 200 metres freestyle. First one just has three participants. Generally speaking, we start with the youngsters, all 97 borns here. Frederick Biggs of Guildford, Joseph Hume of Plymouth, and Cameron Curl of Millfield. So just the three. Looking to uh, more impressive times. So not even three, we only have two. We are down to two because we don't have anybody in lane three. So just Joseph Hume of Plymouth in four, and Cameron Curl of Millfield going in lane number five. So an absolute head-to-head, side-by-side for these two. Let's see what they can do. Four lengths of this Glasgow pool, and both looking to improve on their times. Both have been uh, well inside the two-minute mark, but again, it's a case of trying to just trim those PBs a bit this morning. Yeah, that's right. Some of these guys from yesterday, so we already mentioned that they could be a little bit sore, could be a little bit tired. But this is you know, an event that you need to come in in the morning and you need to really produce a good heat swim if you want to progress into the junior final or even to the senior final. And this is, this is actually a, a unique situation here where they've got two guys just going head to head. Normally you have another six swimmers in the race, but these guys, it's, it's almost like a, a swim off and they'll just be racing each other and sometimes that can really increase your performance and you actually see that these, these guys will probably swim better just because they're racing each other. Well, it's a good race at the moment. At 100, there's uh, very little to choose between them. In fact, as far as the clock's concerned, just 0.27 of a second separating Cameron Curl in lane number five and Joseph Hume, who is in second place. And if anything, it's getting tighter and tighter. Not much to choose between them at all. It's a good old sprint here. This is the event, of course, that you felt uh, most comfortable with. Yeah, that's certainly right. 200 metres freestyle was my favourite event. And it's, uh, for me, I always used to really attack the third 50, and it looks like these guys are doing exactly the same in the turn in what one or well 14 one hundredths of a second apart with 50 meters to go and it's you need to make that move on the third 50 but you also need to have a lot of in reserve so you can finish it off down the 450 well it's gonna be a great finish here because these two have been inseparable all the way and in fact the man who's been leading Cameron Kerr is probably gonna have to give a second best well he is gonna have to give a second best to Joseph Hume of Plymouth let's see what kind of time he can set here 154.28 so that is a new personal best for a new personal best for both of them 154.28 for the winner 154.83 for Cameron Kerr well, Joseph Hume just had a little bit too much down that last 25. You can see him coming into the finish now, head down, driving all the way to the wall, and a sizable PB of just over one and a half seconds. So it's a nice start to the morning. Great start to the morning for them and indeed for us. A nice competitive race to get things underway. So that's the heat number one finished. On to heat number two. We have a full contingent of eight for this one. Julian Chan, Quinn Lee in one for Dulwich, Thomas Flaherty of Milton Keynes in two, Adam Hollows of Derwent side three, Daniel Jervis of Swansea in four, Carl Chisholm of Kirklees in five, Reese Worth of Plymouth Leander in six, Nico Campbell of Hatfield in seven, and Louis Seller of Team Inniswich going in lane eight, nearly the first 50 completed, and uh, well, little to choose between any of them at the first turn. Certainly right. A lot of these guys are in the 400G 
junior final last night, Daniel Jarvis. He actually won the 400 meter final last night for the junior event. And he's back in the pool for half the distance this morning in the middle lane, in lane number four. But there's nothing separating all eight swimmers. Almost can put a blanket over them. Uh, it looks like they're within probably about 0.2 of each other. Good news from the women's last night is that uh, the relay team got their qualification by four seconds, England uh, four by two teams. There will be an England four by two team. Of course, it has to be nominated and accepted, but uh, they've done the time they require. So hopefully it's just a rubber stamping job for the four by two women. You see the four by two men step up, and this is a great race. Well, all of them still very much in the mix. Nobody has been dropped yet. Look at the center lanes. It was Adam Hollows who was leading at the last turn. This is the 150 split. This is where we should be able to sort them out, but in fact, we can't not really at the moment. Lewis Sellers now taking the front of the lead. The Carl Chisholm in second, joint second with Daniel Jervis, and fourth place is Reese Worth. Yeah, starting now to spread out at the halfway mark. 0.7 separated all eight swimmers, but now it does look like there is starting to be a move in the middle of the lane with Daniel Jervis from Swansea University starting to power down in this last 15 metres. Daniel Jervis just getting to the head of the field, done it by about a body length in the end. This will be Jervis's race to win, which he does in 153.62. Second place to Reese Worth of Plymouth. Third, Carl Chisholm. And uh, one to eight in the end were separated by, well, about four seconds, I suppose. It dropped away a little bit of the back for the likes of Adam Hollows. That's a decent time for the winner. 153.62 for Jervis. Reese Worth in second, Carl Chisholm in third. Pace that incredibly well. Everyone was together in a line at the 100 meter mark. Didn't panic, and then he started to make his move on the third 50, and he had a lot left down the fourth 50, and especially the last 25 metres. Quite a lot of experience in uh, this next race. People have been around for a while. Just looking to see if they can push on one more time for a better time. Including the likes of Xavier Mohamed in lane number four. Lewis Smith, who's at Swansea. Lewis will look back maybe at and what he's done so far, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm quite pushed on the way I wanted to. Well, there's a chance for him to show exactly what he can do. Ben Carey of Salford in one, Sean Muscroft of Manchester in two, Cameron Brown of Newport three, Xavier Mohamed at Cardiff in four, Lewis Smith of Swansea at five, Tom Halley of Newcastle six, Suleiman Butt of Aberdeen in seven, and Jordan Hughes of North Ayrshire as eight. And Suleiman Butt it is leading at the first turn. Yeah, a lot's been mentioned about the Solomon Butt. Yeah, he's got a lovely stroke out there in lane number seven. Comes from the same area as David Carey and Robbie Urenic, as well as Hannah Miley. So, you know, up in Aberdeen, they always seem to produce swimmers, and he seems to be the next wave of swimmers that are coming through at the minute. But I'm interested to see how Zave Mohammed goes in lane number four. He always seems to be there or thereabouts, and he certainly was a great European junior quite a few years ago, and he never seems to have moved on since then. But, you know, who knows, he could get into that relay team for Wales for the Commonwealth Games later on this year. Well, he'll be hoping that, because uh, relays are where there are slightly easier so the Commonwealth Games level medals to be won. Wales need to try and get a quartet together for the 4x2, and surely he'll be in the mix for that. Well, certainly at the front of the field with a 50 to go. It's been a very positive swim by Cameron Brown in three. Suleiman Butt just edged into second on that turn. Third is Javier Mohamed and fourth Ben Kerry of Salford. Still another close race again. All these 200 freestyles this morning have been incredibly close. And looking now, it is going to be lane three that's starting to edge out in front. Cameron Brown paced it again very, very well. You can't go too fast on the 200 meter freestyles, but you do need to get yourself out there. Cameron Brown will take it. 152.82 for him. Lewis Smith, uh, who was at the back of the field at the 50, got his way through to 153.31. Xavier Mohammed, 153.34 again. Very closely grouped, one, two, and three, as you'll see from that. The uh, first seven separated by about a second and a half. Next heat, heat number four of the men's 200 metres freestyle. 
Getting into the uh, faster swimmers now. So the those who will hope to uh, take big chunks off their time. Adam Rowe of Swansea in one. Bradley Lynch of Birmingham in two. Alex Dunk of Prescott in three. Luke Howdle of Nova Centurion in four. Grant Quigley of Stockport Metro in five. Oliver Tennant of Swansea in six. Danu Shorthouse also from Swansea University in seven. And also Putland of City of Cardiff in lane eight. 50 completed at the turn. It's Grant Quigley by just two tenths of a second. We saw Grant quickly go out very fast in the 400 metres freestyle yesterday in the heats. Couldn't hold on over the last 200 metres, but he's, he's put himself out there this morning in 200 metres freestyle. I just mentioned in the previous heat, you do need to get yourself out there. The 200 is starting to become more of a sprint, but it's got to be a controlled sprint. You've got to be out there in the first 100 with everybody, and you then need to turn the afterburners on for the third 50 and still have a lot left down the fourth 50 to finish off the race. Race developing between three and five. Alex Dunk in second place, just behind Grant Quigley, but not much. But the, in the third 50, as Ross so often mentioned, the race can transform, often does transform. But these two have got their eyes on the big prize. That's getting first place and getting a decent time here this morning. So three and five at the moment. Just wait and see if there's anybody in the outside smokers who might get in. Also, Potland is just making his way through in lane at number eight. Moved up into fourth place. Third in lane one is Adam Rowe, but the centre lane is where we need to concentrate at the moment anyway. Alex Dunk has a lead of about a quarter of a second over Grant Quigley at the turn. This is where all the training pays off. He's put your head down, down that last 25 metres, and it looks like Alex Dunk is going to take this heat number four in an impressive swim. Not paced off anybody else, he's just done his own race, and he's going to hit the wall in 150.79. So that is a huge PB from Alex Dunk, entry time of 152.16, and that is an excellent time from Alex Dunk. Well done. Yeah, some good times right through the board there. Uh, second place going to Adam Rowe, 151.73 behind him, Grant Quigley. Otto Putland in the outside lane, and in eight with a 151.78. So there were four there under 152. Right, we're into the big names now. Olympians and people who want to be on that Commonwealth Games team for their respective countries. Some already are. In the case of Jan Lloyd. He goes for City of Cardiff in four. Rest of the swimmers. Plymouth Theander, represented by Jack Smith in one. Tom Sunter of Sheffield in two. Alfie Howells of Bath, used to be in Cardiff. He's in three. Lewis Coleman of Sheffield in five. Adam Barrett of Loughborough in six. Rob Bale of University of Stirling in seven. Uh, better known perhaps as a 100 freestyler. And in eight, Matthew Parks of Edinburgh University. I think this is going to be quite a tight race, this one. Yeah, really interesting to see how Adam Barrett does in lane number six. He's gone out quick, 25.08. That is really, really quick. But he's put in some really Really strong performances, certainly over the, the back end of last year in the short course, went very, very fast on the 200 metres freestyle at 143. So, you know, he's got that endurance in him. Normally, see him as a as a 100 metre butterfly, but now he's trying his look at 100 free and here in 200 metres free, and he's looking in very, very strong and smooth in lane number six, turning in 52.98. Well, he's never been sub 150 before, as Adam. I think he's pretty much on course to do that here today. Everybody taking uh, fairly big chunks of their personal bests, so that's what we want to see improvement. But all of a sudden, look at that four grouping together in five, six, seven, and eight. Very little choose between Coleman, Barrett, Bale, and Parks at this stage. It's going to be a very, very tight fish as we expected it would be. And just about holding on, well, he was for a moment there, Adam Barrett, but now he's back in third place because it's Rob Bale who's come to the front. Yeah, so Rob Bale member of the 4x200 freestyle team at the Olympics in 2012. He actually retired for around about six months and then has come back. This is his first competitive race, really, since his retirement. But it is actually Lewis Coleman in lane number five that's storming away with, with this one. It left Adam Barrett, the early pace setter, and it is going to be Lewis Coleman that finishes this heat number five. Come on, Tim Steele. Yeah, 149.33 for Lewis Coleman. Second place to Rob Bale, 149.86. Jan Lloyd in third. Another Sheffield Swimmer finishing in fourth place, Tom Sunter in a time of 150.91. So Lewis Coleman goes sub 150, 149.33. Rob Bale in second place, and uh, Tom Sunter just behind Yian Lloyd. Heat number six. 
of the men's 200 metres freestyle. And representatives from City Manchester Aquatics, Sheffield, Perth, Bath, University of Stirling, First Club and Stockport Metro. All in this, a couple of uh, Sheffield swimmers in there from two and six with uh, Max Litchfield, who used to be at Doncaster now at Sheffield, and Gareth Mills in two. And again, with the 200 frees, all of them this morning, it's, it's unlikely you're going to have anybody running away with these races. We're not in this one. There's Gareth Mills did a very, very good 400 metres freestyle last night. First time uh, going around the 350 mark. Callum Jarvis will be representing Wales later on this, this year in the Commonwealth Games. Jack Scott for Scotland. Max, Max Litchfield, first time under 350 in the 400. So he's you know, expecting to come through the field over the second half of the race, but it is actually Daniel Briggs from City Manchester Aquatics that's going to turn first in 53.22, so a little bit slower than the heat before of Adam Barrett, but Adam Barrett did die off over the last half of the race. Well, there's probably only about a body length and a half between first and last, not even that now, they're, they're kind of constantly teetering up yet again, and uh, the only swimmer who looks to maybe be uh, having a little struggle is Tom Litton of Stockport Metro, I say it's a struggle, he's certainly still on the legs of Duncan Scott in the lane alongside him, but he's not going to be at the front of the mix here as they come in the last 50. And Gareth Mills of Sheffield has taken the lead. Jack Scott in second place and third at the turn is Callum Jarvis. This could again change complexion over the next uh, 25, 30 metres. Yeah, it does look like Jack Scott's working incredibly hard. They want to make this final. Only the top eight will make the final. Normally in the British Championships, you will have a semi-final, but not here. And it looks like it's going to be Jack, uh, Callum Jarvis, sorry, that's storming through to take this heat number six. And he does in a time of 149.63, or 150.10 for second place for Gareth Mills and Stephen Milne in third place. So the winning time, once again, was 149.63. So only one swimmer went one uh, sub 150 in that, and that was Callum Jarvis. So far this morning, he's not really been that that quick. You know, a couple of photos pumped in 349s. Um, you would expect them to to really be pushing on the the door of 48s if they want to be making that final. I think it's going to happen here, though, Ross. It's going to happen here, isn't it? Yeah, big dogs in lane number four. Fantastic swim last night in the 400 metres freestyle, breaking the British record. James Guy, British record that was set by David Davis in 2009, way back into the suit era days when the suits gave you so much more buoyancy and made the swimmers a lot faster. And he's come, a, there's a new era of swimming since then, and he's the new wave of, of swimmers coming through. And he really is a talent, and you can see there, already turning first in 25.13, and he's the one to beat. Even bigger dog in the lane alongside him, the uh, huge figure of Nick Granger, who did so well to take a three-second PB on his 400. 200 is not his best, but he's doing the 1500 later, which is probably his weakest event of the lot, but it's not weak for James Guy. James Guy has uh, got his eyes on a certain person's English record here, which is Ross from Recollection. I, you know, people say records are there to be broken, but when they're your record, they are not there to be broken. Um, so, you know, I hope James swims really, really fast, but I hope he swims, you know, probably 1-100 one, one slower than what I, what I did the British record. And what was it? Come on, it's your only record that remains. So you must remember the time. <laughs> I certainly do. 146.46. So, right, I don't think it's probably going to go this morning. I think you're okay. For, you're safe for a little while. Anyway. I, I, well, no, Bob, that's gone. That's, oh, no, probably not. No, it will, it'll be gone tonight. It'll be gone tonight. 120.03 at the turn for James Guy. Joshua Walsh is in second. Nick Granger is in third. There's no doubt. As I said, there's nobody's going to run away with any race this morning. James Guy looked like he was going to do for a little while. Nick Granger is starting to come back towards him. So, obviously, we'll get strong, stronger the longer the race goes on for Nick Granger. But James Guy still has a battle body length lessening with every stroke. Granger's going to be alongside him at the end. And it's going to be James Guy who touches in 148.64. That's better. That's just sub 149, so we've been looking for. Second place to Nick Granger, 148.81. And Joshua Walsh just going outside the 149 barrier. But uh, one and two inside the 149s. And James Guy winning that in the end, only by 17 hundredths of a second. Much tighter at the end than it looked like being. Yeah, but he completely switched off down that last bit. It did the work over the first three lengths. It will be tired, it will be sore from last night. It was a massive effort. He probably wouldn't have got a lot of sleep. 
and he did the job. Qualified for the final tonight and I fully expect not only the English record but probably the British record to be broken tonight. So Kerry Ann, good swim in there. You did. You mentioned you thought the times might have been just a little bit faster. Yeah. Well, I think um, you know at the Commonwealth Games when the, these events happen, because I think this is the, the same program that they're going to have at the Commonwealth Games. The boys are going to have to back up really fast swims in the morning if they want to make it into the final, or the semi-final. Sorry, as it will be um, at the Commonwealth Games. And, and the, for me, it wasn't quite fast enough for what I was hoping. But. I don't know, maybe maybe they're all a bit tired from last night, from the 400. a lot of them were swimming, obviously, in the 400, yeah. the, the heats yesterday, final last night. So do you think that's had a bit of an impact on their performance? Or do you think this is something that they maybe went into the event this morning, maybe not going as fast as what they could have done? What do you think? Yeah, well, the, the other interesting thing is that um, at this meet, there isn't semi-finals for the 200s. It's just a straight, straight final. final. So they had to swim really fast times. And for only two of them to go 148, I was kind of hoping that, they, you know, it would be around about 148 for them all to make the final. Final, but you know, I think they just probably needed to get that swim out of their system. They needed to kind of, but now that you know they have a benchmark and they can go back and be like, right, we need to do this, we need to work on that, and um, and we'll have a bit more of a rest for tonight's swim. And I think Ross is maybe a little bit concerned about his uh, <laughs> British record going at 146. Do you think that could go tonight? I think Ross, yes, it might oh. be gone tonight. I think uh, James is just he's just on fire at the moment, yeah. and um, he'll definitely be eyeing up that English record and Robbie's British record as well, actually. Okay, <laughs> so unfortunately maybe for Ross, but we'll see later on this evening because anything, anything can happen. So any other swims there that you're surprised with? Because we mentioned about uh, Nick Granger, that his yeah. sister was the one that encouraged him to start <laughs> yeah. swimming. I'm sure he'd love to hear that everyone So I, I'd spoken to him and asked him how he got into swimming and he was like, oh, it's my sister's fault. And I was like, <laughs> your sister's fault? And he was like, yeah, well, she was a, a good youngster and um, somebody had said, suggested to my parents, why don't you take them swimming? So he's like, I just had to join in. I had to just go with her. Um, I so, love that sibling yeah, rivalry. I just had to go with it. I had to just do it and then and then she you know she's unfortunately not swimming anymore but he's just gone from strength to strength to strength and yeah. um, it's quite interesting because when I was talking to him he said that his his technique wasn't very good when he first started and it's something right. that Russ Barber his coach at Sheffield has had to really work on over the last few years and yeah. it's made such a big difference and speaking of Russ Barber Team Steel you know 17 swimmers I think they've got here performing very well I mean last night yeah. we saw four uh, Sheffield swimmers in one of the finals yeah they're, they're doing very well aren't they yeah I think um, we're just going to see more and more Sheffield people in those finals. Yeah, we are. Well, speaking of finals, we're going to move on now to the women's 50-metre freestyle final. Jumping the gun a bit there, uh, Hannah. We're only at the heats, but uh, I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> Heat number one contains eight, and uh, in case you missed it yesterday, that uh, name in lane four is the daughter of an Olympic bronze medalist. Maisie Jameson is Andy Jameson's daughter. Um, and he's watching wherever he might be in the world with his high-powered banking job. I'm sure somewhere he's logged on to watch his daughter in the 50 freestyle. She goes in four, and uh, we'll see how this one unfolds. It should only be about uh, 26 or 27 seconds long, so I won't say much more. I'll let Ross have a quick word. Yeah, another one of those 50 splashing dashes. You know, you've got to be focused with, on the job in hand. You can't rush the stroke, but you also you've got to be incredibly powerful. You see some of these girls later on with big muscles and big over six foot as well. But the first heat goes to Constantine Dean from Maidenhead in 27.08. Emily Crane in second place, 27.11. And Macy Jameson, 27.16 for her. And that is a new personal best for Macy as it is for Constance Dean and I think for Emily Crane as well, all around the 27 mark. The fifth freestyle is a really hard, hard event to, to nail because, like I said, you, you can't rush it, but you've only got 20, 26, 27 seconds, or, or certainly when, when the, the faster girls come in, 24, 25 seconds to get it right. But if you start rushing it, you start slipping on the water and you start you know, doing too many strokes. And so you've got to have that purchase on the water. You've got to be powerful with it. But at the same time, you've got to be relaxed. 
I'm going to get you explain to non-swimming aficionados what slipping on the water means. If you step on ice, how do you step on water? We'll come back to that when we have a bit of a gap, because we are on to heat number two. Representatives from Leeds, Epsom, Salford, Manchester, Bath, Leicester, Peterborough, and Trowbridge. It might well be the outside smoker here. Paige Fellows is having a very, very good swim. In fact, one and eight are at the front of the field. Magdalena Saigon closest to us. One and eight are going to be one and two, I think. Uh, one and four in the end. Magdalena Saigon getting it for Leeds. First sub-27 swim in the morning. 26.49 for her. Katie Matz in second place. Emma Saunders third. And Paige Fellows in fourth place. Winning time again, 26.49 for the Leeds swimmer. And they are starting to re-emerge as a force as well. 26.49, Matz, 26.88, 26.97 for Emma Saunders. Heat number three. There's your lineup. I'll give you the uh, teams in order. Bolton, Davencio, Chelsea, Westminster, City of Sunderland, City of Sheffield, Plymouth, Woking, and Ealing. Ekaterina Avramova is one of these swimmers that cannot progress to the final. She can do the semi finals, which is an overseas swimmer, so she can't progress to the final. She should be one of the uh, class acts here. But we're looking again at the center stage. We're looking at lane seven this time. Hazel Ferguson's had a very, very good swimmer. There's at the front at 35. So here's her cracking start, cracking open in 25 metres. It looks like she might just be edged out by lane one. Is it? No, Hazel Ferguson gets it. 26.79 for her. Emily Barkley in second place. And Ekaterina Avramova in third place. Winning time 26.97. Sorry, 79. I'm dyslexic there. Hazel Ferguson in first place for Woking. Who I know are watching on the stream this morning. And uh, thank you for your message last night tell your friends and family and uh, get as many logged on as you can and hit our boss in the pocket because the more we get the more he's in the poor house <laughs> a great swim from hazel ferguson like i said she really did nail the start and then you need to do that on the 50 meter freestyle because you can't ever get behind because if you get behind the water is so choppy and you can't really swim fast through choppy water so you want to be out there in front and that's why you're seeing here that actually in the outside lanes lanes one and two seven and eight they're actually some fast performances because you're not getting the wash from the rest of the swimmers in the middle of the pool best times in the world are in the 24s because we haven't seen anything approaching that yet but we are going to get quicker times here Catherine Stark is in lane four is the quickest on paper. Linda Shaw of Leeds in five and Lauren Avril in lane three. And it's going to be lane four that's going to take it with the red cap. Catherine Stark, 26.57 is the quickest time of the morning for her. Mari Davis coming in in second place. And third to Jessica Jackson of Hatfield in 26.79. We had four go under 27 there. Jaeger Turner being the other one in lane number one. So fastest qualifier in that race did actually win the heat. It's the first time we've seen that in the 50 meter freestyles this morning. Starting to come now to the faster swimmers. Some Olympians, some well, Olympic yeah. champions. Olympic champion indeed. Ruta Meliatite going in lane four. Uh, not her best event, of course, she's better known as a breaststroker, but she'll be quick. She always is. Interesting to see her reaction time as well on the 50, because I'm sure she'll be quicker than anybody else in that field. You can notice, see it. Now, when you're watching a certain on this camera angle, you see the start, she'll be the first one off the block by probably about 0.1, and that is a huge margin over a 50 meter freestyle. If you win by 0.1, you know, you're winning by a country mile. Let's have a look at the reaction times, which will come up. You won't see them, but we'll see them on our screen here. So, how does she compare? Yeah, she is 0.61. Compared with 0.66 for Eloise Barber and for Jessica Lloyd. So she does get away fastest. Will she finish the fastest, though? She's actually been a lot quicker off her reaction. She's normally around about 5'8", so she's a little bit down on that. But she's powering her way through. We do know her as a 50-meter and 100-meter breaststroker, but she's also incredibly quick on the 50. But she's not having it all her own way. Lauren Quigley is in the mix. So, too, is Jess Lloyd. But Rusa does get it. 25.61 is the time. First time we've seen in the 25s this morning in terms of winning time. Lauren Quigley in second 25.73 and Jess Lloyd from City of Manchester 25.77 that's more like it but you, you're right to say that uh, normally she's around about the half second mark in terms of a leap off the block so just a little bit off that so I'm sure that'd be something that she and her coach will be working on for later
Yeah, that's right. She's got the European Championships coming up later on this year. No doubt she's already qualified for that. So this, this competition for her is, is more of just getting the race practice, working out what they've been doing over the winter months and in training and tweaking or fine tweaking those little things that you know they have implemented over the last seven or eight months. The British number two is in the, the next heat. That's Amy Smith, second fastest time of the Brits in the world this year. And she's from Loughborough University, going in lane four. Jess Christie of South Aberdeen in one. Katie Latham of Thanet in two. Dewey Maynard of Plymouth in two. Rebecca Guy of Manchester in five. Harriet Cooper, Derby six. Fiona Hardy of Paul in seven. And Brianna Close of City of Manchester Aquatics in lane eight. Nearly 35 done and very hard to call this one. It is, but it does look like it is. Amy Smith, very smooth technique in lane number four. Edging out the two swimmers either side of it. And it is going to be Amy Smith that touches the wall in 25.49, fastest so far this morning with one heat to go. Yeah, that's a good uh, cobweb blowing off swim for Amy Smith. She will look to go considerably faster than that in the so far tonight, but job done as far as she's concerned this morning. Jimmy Maynard of Plymouth, 25.67, Rebecca Guy, 25.68. So uh, three swimmers there getting under the 26 second mark. That's right, Harriet Cooper from City Derby just outside the 25 second in 26.09. Represented Great Britain at the European Juniors last year, as did Katie Latham. Have done it. Last time in the world this year is Kate Campbell's 24.13. She'll be at the Commonwealth Games. We have Sarah Showstrom, Ranomi Kromovich Yo Yo, and then we have Fran Halsall, fourth in the world at the moment. She goes in the final heat, heat number seven of the 50 metres freestyle. Now, how will she approach this? She knows she's got loads of room for maneuver. Top 16 qualify for tonight's series, so she doesn't have to go for broke. She's seen what Amy Smith has done. She'd like to do the fastest time, of course, she would. But uh, well, you can already see just how superior she is to everybody else in lane number four. It's such a good, say, economical stroke. And you can see she's not even going flat out here. No, she's breathing every two strokes, which is unusual for Fran. She probably would breathe once, if at all. And she's breathing every two strokes. This is just a walking apart for Fran. And uh, touches the wall in second, actually, just being hipped. But Fran's time, 25.45, will be good enough for the semi final later. And Harkin from the University of Stirling just pipped it by seven one hundredths of a second in 25.38. And that is the fastest time of the morning. I think she actually swam about. 20 metres of that 50. That, that was kind of, all right, I'm going to turn things off now. I know exactly what I need to do. I've got my start underway. I just need to finish here. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen her swim that uh, quite so relaxed. No, and to, and to breathe every two strokes, when you breathe on freestyle, it does slow you down. So on, certainly on the 50, when you don't necessarily need to breathe, you don't breathe. Uh, you might take a breath around about 35 metres, but that'll be it. Some of the big guys won't take a breath the whole 50. So to, to breathe every single stroke, she probably breathe 14 times then and that is going to slow down and she qualified second fastest so there's a lot more in the tank for Fran Housel it'll be interesting to see when she delivers that later on if it's going to be the semi-final or the final tomorrow so I was a bit keen to jump straight to the finals earlier on there. Of course, they were the heats, but they were very, very good heats, weren't they? Impressive yeah. swim and very relaxed swim there by Francesca Halsall. Yeah, well, what's really interesting about Fran is that James, her coach James Gibson at Loughborough, he's trying to change her stroke. I think he wants her to swim a bit more like a long-distance freestyler, which is, I think, what she was doing then. She was breathing every two. That's what long-distance freestylers do. She's obviously trying to hold a little bit back so that when she can get into the final, the semi-final, you know, she'll breathe a little less. I think something along those lines but I mean her stroke just looks so beautiful so long breathing every two so I think James is doing a really good job with trying to change her stroke into a bit more of a distance freestyle stroke instead of the, the really fast paced um, freestyle stroke that, that she has had before so yeah really great to see her swimming so fast she didn't win that race but I mean she's got so much more to give tonight I'm positive of it and there's a there's a lot to be training for obviously the Commonwealth Games this summer now we mentioned earlier about Grace Vertigans about yeah she, she's made quite a big move hasn't she yeah so um grace was actually she was born in, in in britain and then her family moved out to saudi arabia for for work for her dad and they moved around a little bit she went to qatar and when she was about 13 she she decided that you know swimming 
was what she wanted to do. So her parents said, well, we need to stay here. But she decided she was going to move back to England and she's going to go to boarding school in Plymouth. And that's where she's been ever since, which wow. is such a big decision for a 13-year-old girl it to make. Indeed. But it's obviously working for her because she's starting to swim really well. And she told me as well that her mom has moved back with her this year. Just it's Commonwealth year, so it's the time for her to kind of just relax a little bit more, have her mom cook her dinner. Her mom can do her washing as well. Well, <laughs> she's just make it a little easier for her. <laughs> that's incredible to think that she's she's committed that much. Now, we're going to move on to the, the heats, of course, for the men's 100-metre breaststroke. She can run in my cookie and laundry if she fancies it. And a breaststroke, heat number one. And we've got some big names to come later on. And some emerging names in the first heat, which has seven competitors in it. Mikhail Umloff of Plymouth in one, Michael Esnouf of Abingdon in two, Kevin Wallbank of DaVinci four, Luke Davis, City of Birmingham in lane four, five is Chris Green of Guildford and Christopher Hall of Staines is in lane eight. It's the uh, 100 breaststroke. We have some very, very impressive world talent to come later on. Let's see what the early stages can prov provide us for with this. Someone certainly needs to come around and do your ironing, Bob. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> so he won the 100 metres breaststroke. It is Luke Davis from City of Birmingham, turning first in 30.76. This is, a, already alluded to, a world-class event for, for British swimming. And it's going to be interesting to see that how many people that we actually have in the finals come the Commonwealth Games in, in 12 weeks' time, because it's all now split up into to Scotland, Wales and England. And you're going to have Adam Peaty against Ross Murdoch, Michael Jameson, uh, Craig Benson, so you know we could actually have four or five or, or six swimmers in that final in the Commonwealth Games. Kevin Warwick should get there first. Does oh that's a big PB 106.07. Never been in the 106s until today. He is now 106.07. Mikhail Umlov in second 106.36 and 106.37 for Michael Esnouf. Uh, no, Paul Achkar. He's uh, pulled out, but we have seven swimmers and uh, that's a decent time. Very good time. Best he's ever done. Kevin. Wallbank 10607. Heat number two. And swimmers from uh, Woking, City of Birmingham, Bath, City of Coventry, Millfield, Loughborough, Warrender, and Western Supermare. All eight lanes are occupied for this one. Only using eight for this competition, not the ten that uh, sometimes we have. And the 100 breaststroke, yeah, we're talking about the pedigree. I think about Nick Gillingham and uh, Adrian Morehouse and uh, David Wilkie, of course, are around these parts. All great 100 breaststrokers of uh, their generations. And it's great to see that City of Coventry are back on the breaststroke scene. With the likes of Adam Whitehead going back 10 years, or 12 years now, the Commonwealth Games winning the 100 metres breaststroke. And 2002 Manchester, and he's going to turn first. Thomas Rook from the city of Coventry, 29.52, so over half a second quicker, or second quicker than the previous heat at the halfway mark. He's looking incredibly strong as he powers down. He's only got 25 meters to go. A breaststroker trained by a backstroker. Adam Ruckwood is his coach at the city of Coventry, our uh, Commonwealth gold medalist from 1994 in Victoria in the uh, 200 backstroke. This is the 100 breaststroke. This is going to be an impressive time. He's not uh, quite going to get around the 102s, but 103.20 is the time. And uh, again, that's a sizable chunk taken out of his personal best there for Thomas Rook. Second place to Joshua Winnicott of Birmingham and Ben Stuckey in third place, 105.04. Look at the margin in the end. That was nearly two seconds between first and second. Oh, fantastic swim from Thomas. Not nearly two seconds off his entry time as well. He had an entry time of 105.1 and went 103.2. So fantastic. And won the heat by nearly two seconds, as you said. That's the kind of swim you're looking for. I'm sure Adam is uh, delighted with that. A quick chat with him earlier. They've uh, got a problem at uh, Coventry because they're going to knock their pool down in uh, a few years' time. And they'll only have a 25-metre facility, probably. 
Hopefully the uh, council and people connected with it see sense and we'll get a 30 meter fall in Coventry, but uh, it's an aging facility and looks like it's not going to be long for this world. So they have to make the most of what they've got while they've got it. It's a nice even break here on the 30s of the 100 breaststroke. Ryan Flanagan, City of Sheffield in lane four. Three is Neil Redman of Bath University in Plymouth that are represented by Jack Burton in five. But the team is making the early stages here. It's these top four metros who are going like an absolute flyer in seven. Thomas Lytton is going to be leading alongside Lawrence Palmer. That's right, turning in 28.94, so again, another half a second quicker than the previous heat at the halfway mark. Thomas Lytton from Stockport Metro already had a fantastic meet, Stockport Metro have, on the first opening one and a half days, and is now starting to edge out in front of the rest of the field, and certainly edging in front of Lawrence Palmer. Well, both of these will be looking for 103 times because that's an area they've not been in before. And Thomas Lytton is really going for this. Real determination, real grit from Tom Lytton. Oh, wow. 102.81. He's bypassed the 103s and gone straight to the 102s. 102.81 for the Stockport Metro swimmer. Lawrence Palmer in second place. And third going to Mark Campbell. I've got to say, that was a very impressive swim by Tom Lytton. Uh, obviously, had a, a design in mind to go much, much quicker than he ever had before. And 62.81 is uh, rapid compared to what he's done in uh, previous swims. Yeah, 1.8 second PB. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's amazing at uh, 22 years of age to be able to do those kind of PBs. But the, like I said, they've, already, they've got a good thing going, starting off really from scratch again. It's right, not... a certain uh, Michael Jameson, who will know uh, that, I'm sure have some Scottish award for too long. If he hasn't already got one, he certainly deserves one. Our 200-metre uh, breaststroke silver medalist from the Olympic Games. The 100 is a little bit short for him, but nonetheless, he is making the adjustment. But he's up against Rob Holders and Millfield, Joe Westelt of uh, Sterling. Now, what's Michael going to do in this? He's probably not certainly not favoured to win the event because it's not his best event. But nonetheless, anything that uh, Michael competes in, he wants to go for. And talking about going for it, James Wilby in the outside lane is the man who's really going for it early on here. 29.20. Jameson in third. Second at the moment is Joe Wellstead of Sterling. I think Michael Jameson is going to be starting playing a little bit of games. He's going to try some things out in the 100 metres because it's not his main event, but he looks like he's going to go out slow and trying to come back. But it looks like it is going to be the swimmer in lane number three, uh, which is Joseph Wellstead from Sterling Swim that's still out in front, as is the swimmer from James, uh, James Welby. From I think Welby Lundberg. might get there first. He does. Yeah, Welby, another swimmer from an outside lane who thought, OK, well, my task and my ambition here is just to give it all I've got and see if I can get down into the 102s. Well, that's what he was in the 103s before, so another big massive, if you like, personal best for James Wilby. Second Joe Wellstead and Michael James in 102.36. And of course this goes to semi-finals, so he doesn't have to worry about going straight to finals, so he can hold a bit back. Rob Holden us in fourth. It's an important point you just make it. This is not a straight final. The 100 metres, they do have the semi final, so it'll be the top 16 that qualify later on to swim this evening. So the likes of Michael Jameson doesn't really have to exert himself too much. Now, this is exciting. Could be very exciting the next two heats of this. Let's see what the mindset is for the boys in terms of going for a big time. We don't have a lane seven. We are missing James Brody. We have everybody else in place. And Adam Peaty, who was uh, swimming very well just behind Michael James in the 200 yesterday, is going in lane four in the 100. Yeah, there's big things expected of Adam Peaty this next year or next year and a half. And what I do like about the way Adam swims is he attacks his heat he attacks the semi-final and then he goes even faster in the final so he's, he's trying to learn from an early age of that's what you need to do in the international level because if you don't produce in, in the heats in the international level you will not make it through to the semi-final and obviously not into the final so he's starting to practice here in Britain of really attacking the heats which he's doing then attacking the semi-final and then doing a faster time in the in the final 
59.90 was his time when he swam it here last week. <laughs> He's close to that in the morning. 10003 for Adam Beatty. Well, if that is his heat swim, we know for the semi-finals he's going to go quicker. We expect him to go quicker anyway. 101.85 for Chris Steeples in second. Jamie Graham in third. That is a marker to lay down, is it not? 60.03? It certainly is. And also he did a fantastic 200 metres breaststroke last night, knocking three seconds off his personal best. And he will be tired and he will be sore from that and he'll be buzzing because he's gone under the uh, nomination time for the Team England qualification. So you certainly would expect him to be on the on the bus going up to, to Glasgow later on this year. So there's a lot of emotions going around, Adam. So you probably didn't get a lot of, a lot of sleep last night. So to do that time this morning, yeah, there's plenty more in the tank for, for later on. But wait, it might get even more exciting. Ross Murdoch is ranked three in the world behind Christian Springer and Cameron van der Berg in this event. 29.75, so we had, and still have, three and four in the world in Britain. So we have Englishman Adam Peaty now making way for Scots from Ross Murdoch. And don't discount Craig Benson either in lane five. These two are rapid. Andrew Willis going as well in lane three. Uh, we are uh, overcome with superstars in this race. Yeah, just that tradition of breaststrokes just continues and continues. And like you've already mentioned Craig Benson in lane number five. Went to the Olympics in 2012 for Great Britain. Ross Murdoch is absolutely flying at the minute. But he's turning around about 0.3 slower than Adam Peaty does. And it'll be interesting if these two guys make the final tomorrow night, Ross Murdoch and Adam Peaty, is how they swim the race. Ross Murdoch's got a better start than Adam, but Adam's got a better first 50, so it'd be, you would expect kind of Adam to be out there in the first 50 and Ross Murdoch to be, to be reeling him in over the second 50, so it'd be interesting to see. Well, we've seen what Adam Peaty can do. 10003, remember. What can you do in response, Ross Murdoch? 10115, so not quite as quick. Nonetheless, I think he's probably keeping his powder a little bit dry. Andrew Willis, 102.57 for him. And that so will be quite considerably good enough to make the semi-finals. Craig Benson in third place. So very, very quickly, actually we'll talk about this later. We've got to get back to the studio. I, I, want, to, I want you to talk about all this, um, this water business, which sounds like ice, but we'll come back to that after we've looked at the results of the final heat, if you're following me, of that one. Ross Murdoch, 101.15. Andrew Willis, 102.45. And Craig Benson, 102.57. All comfortably into the semi-finals tonight. So some great swims there, Kerry Ann. We've been discussing a lot about Adam Peaty, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, he's again, as we mentioned earlier, he's he's made a lot of sacrifices and commitments for his swimming career. Yeah. Well, Adam actually uh, he lives or he was born, sorry, in Stoke, and he has had to travel pretty much to and from um, from the city of Derby with Mel. But he just has so much power. And I watched him do a session, um, and it was a session of hundreds. It was short course and not the best pool, certainly not the best block that he had to dive off, and he was consistently hitting. 61, 62, 63. So I was well and truly blown away when I watched him swim. But he's a whole second ahead of everybody this morning. And talking about backing things up, like we I mentioned earlier, he backed up a great 200 last night with a fantastic 100 split this morning. And that's his 100. That's his heat split. I can't wait to see what he does in the semi-final and the final tomorrow. I think because we, we mentioned breaststroke and uh, we think automatically Michael Jameson. Yeah. But, you know, we've, we've got a lot of guys in the mix here for, yeah. for the semi-final. So Ross Murdoch being one of them. Well. Yeah, well, he had a great swim there. I mean, it was a 61-1, which, you know, he, sh he he won't be all that happy with that. I'm sure after seeing Adam Peaty's split of one minute, he'll want to definitely be going better than that. But he has such a beautiful stroke as well. He's so powerful, and he can, his stroke is really long, um, and he has fantastic turns. So it's going to be such a great rivalry there tonight. I really can't wait to see that. But the 100 breaststroke is a completely different race, I would say, to the 200. It's all about the speed. It's all about getting out there. And, I mean, those those boys, uh, you know, they will all consistently go under 59, I'm sure, tonight. Because some good times produced there as well in the, the yeah. heats, aren't there? Yeah, look, look, quite a lot of them are around the 102 mark, which is, you know, which would be really good for semi-finals. So I think tonight will be a fight for the rest of the places, but I think first and second into the final tomorrow will be Adam and um, and Ross. OK, so you're putting your money on Adam. I'm um, putting my money on Adam. You're putting yeah, your money putting on, my money on Adam. OK, well, I, I obviously enjoyed those swims as well, as well. Watching them, the power, the strength, yeah. the speed, like you say, the 100 to the 200 is yeah. a different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, completely. Uh, well, moving on now, we're going to move to the women's 100 metres uh, back 
stroke. That's the heat, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Yes, we have uh, the first of how many heats do we have on this one? We have uh, seven to bring to you. First of which has that lineup. And uh, the clubs are Kelly, Hodderston, Rawl, Wolverhampton, Woking, Monson, and Stockport Metro. I'm very keen to hear about the slipping the water business that you're talking about, Ross Murdoch. So, Ross Murdoch, who are you? You're Ross Davenport, that's right. Yes, I'll be in the breaststroke 100 meter <laughs> final tomorrow night. I just yep. see you doing that. No, I can't. <laughs> There's more chance of me doing it than you, Bob. Oh, I think there's no, that's <laughs> undeniable. There's, Actually, there's yeah. not even a discussion to be had on that one. <laughs> Actually, with my breaststroke, you've probably got more chance. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen mine. And you don't want to either. Hannah Jones, anyway, in the outside lane, is uh, something of the early pace on the 100 backstroke here. She's from uh, Stockport Metro. They're having a, a good meet so far. But they're pretty much all in a the line. There's nothing we much to choose between any of them when they get to the 50-10. Uh, visibly as they disappear away from us. It looks like Hannah Jones has had the best of the first 50. Let's see what she has. She has 31.60 with uh, Courtney Price in second. In fact, joint second with Emily Cutler. And fourth is Savan Jemmett. Yeah, Hannah Jones out in lane number seven. Taking his first heat of the 100 meters backstroke. Looking really smooth. Nice head position. Starting to still extend her lead. Over the rest of the field, this is a great swim from Hannah Jones, Stockport. We've already mentioned numerous times this week, having a fantastic meet. It looks like it's continuing here. It's a big personal best, is it not? 104.49 for Hannah Jones. What was her previous best? 106.11, so a second, over a second and a half PB. It's a fantastic swim from Hannah Jones. Just keeping that Stockport Metro train going. Emily Cutler in second and Courtney Price in third. Right, okay, slipping the water, explain it to me in 30 seconds. Yeah, if you, if you increase your stroke rate too much, you can you, know, you lose the purchase on the water, so you lose the feel and you lose the power actually on the water, so your hand slips through the water. If you start to slip, you don't have that whole force of your hand and your forearm moving the water backwards. So that's when you talk about the slipping, your hand just goes straight through the water and you just spin your arms over. You, you know, your stroke rate really increases and you actually don't go any faster. You use so much more energy, but you don't go faster. There you go, exactly what you wanted. Now you know, so don't ask that question again, Ballard. You should know it by now. Heat two of the women's 100 meters backstroke. We have full eight to consider here. Sunderland, Derby, Wirral Metro, Taunton, Dean, Plymouth, South Ayrshire, Preston and Nova Centurion in order for the swimmers here. Let's see, uh, well, this is quite as tight as the last one. In fact, it's only at 25. It's equally so. Karen Reid of South Ayrshire is trying to make an early move in lane number six. And uh, I need to keep an eye on those outside lanes because they uh, seem to be catching us out a few times this morning with people going a bit quicker than we anticipated. But the first turn is Karen Reid of South Ayrshire with Laura Stevens of Plymouth in second place and Eleanor Baldwin of Derby in three. I think we can get uh, quite a few more PVs in this race. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. It's interesting to see from the earlier heats to certainly the later heats is how much the underwater phase changes. So these girls who are still very young are still learning the sport. They're going around about six or seven metres off each turn, or off the turn, whereas you see when you see Lizzie Simmons later, it'll be the whole 15 metres underwater. But it looks like an incredible swim from Eleanor Baldwin in lane number two. Actually comes second in 64.38. There's Karen Reed from South Ayrshire, the winning, just by over a tenth of a second in 104.28. Third place to Laura Stevens, Isabel Thwaite in fourth. So three of them going under 65 there. Karen Reed, Eleanor Baldwin, and Laura Stevens. That's your one to eight for all the clubs who want to see how their swimmers did this morning. So just waiting for the swimmers to exit the pool. As we look at the lineup for heat number three. And again, a good spread of different clubs for City of Birmingham in one. Two is Team Epswich, three is St. Felix School, Warrender four. Kelly College 5, Plymouth 6, City of Aberdeen 7, and Charlotte Evans of City of Milton Keynes in lane 8. 
That's your lineup for the start. As we focus in on Megan Briggs of Warrender. With the time around about 104. 104.10 is her best time. Looking for somebody to start getting down to the 103s now. This could be the race to do it. But again, that's uh, lane seven is proving to be quite a good lane for the backstrokers this morning. Certainly the people in them. Anyway, Emily Grant's had a, a decent start, but also not going too badly. Is Stephanie Reynolds of Kelly College in lane number five. So between those two as to who touches first at the first 50. Not much to choose between them. Here comes the turn, and it will be just Stephanie Reynolds, 30.73, with Danielle Baker in second. Expect Meg Megan Briggs in lane four from Warren DeBass to come through strong. She did turn seventh at that turn, but she is a 200 meter backstroker being coached by K Chris Gilchrist, a former Olympian. But it doesn't look like she's actually going to make any inroads onto Stephanie Reynolds from Kelly College and the outside lane to her. No, she's looking good at Stephanie Reynolds. Very good indeed. I think she's going to be looking at um, quite a size. She doesn't tie up here. Quite a sizable PB. So the end of the 104s. Yes, yeah, she is. 103.31 for Stephanie Reynolds from Kelly College. Second place going to Charlotte Evans. 104.18 and 104.2 for Rebecca Sherwin. So uh, fastest time of the morning so far. Stephanie Reynolds, first to get under that 64 second mark, 103.31. An impressive finish. She didn't tie up. No, certainly didn't. And she had a cheeky look as well, with two two metres to go to have a look at the rest of the field. Now that will slow her down. No need to look with two metres to go. Why don't you look when you've done the 100 metres and see how far you had. Interesting swimmer in lane number four here, Bob. Hannah Miley. Don't know much about her. Need a bit of information. An event you don't know. Well, she, I've got to admit, I think she's done virtually every event on the program. And if she could have done the men's event, she would have done as well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's any event that she hasn't done at some stage. No, no. And uh, what was great about Hannah is when she identifies a weakness on her medley, she just does more and more races on that weakness. And, and obviously, she wants to identify that backstroke is probably not one of her strengths. So she enters the backstroke to work on it and get better at it. And that's exactly what she did with the breaststroke. And now her breaststroke is one of the strongest parts of her medley uh, discipline. I think I've seen her do all the freestyle events. I've seen her do the breaststroke events. Has she done the butterfly one? Yes, she has. So I think, I think she, she's just kind of ticking them off as she goes along. And Anna Miley going lane four. Now, where is she at the turn? Well, she's not leading. Uh, Eliza Duffy is the leading. And in fact, Hannah is back in sixth at the turn. Candice Hall in second. Chantal Austin in third. And uh, Hannah's finding this... Uh, a bit of a difficult uh, race for her. Yeah, she's getting a bit of a backstroke lesson here from Eliza Duffy. Plymouth are one of those clubs also having a fantastic meet so far. And Eliza Duffy is probably two metres up for the rest of the field. And it is lane seven, Candice Hall. It looks like she's going to be second. If Oh, second PB for Eliza Duffy as well. 102.77, the winning time. Hannah Miley, despite the fact that she did seem to be struggling, still managed to finish in second place. She was a long way adrift with 25 to go, and it just shows the endurance and the application that Hannah shows. 104.18, remember this goes to semi-finals tonight, so that should be hopefully sufficient for her. It's going to be on the cusp probably. 104.18 is the time, but 102.77 certainly gives Eliza Duffy a good chance of getting into the top 16 tonight. As they get one to eight, Chantal Austin at the back, 105.45. We saw this yesterday that uh, a lot of swimmers are doing events that are not necessarily their main event. So you've got in lane seven, Rebecca Turner, who was swimming the 200 meters freestyle at the Olympic Games in the 4x200. And you've also got Ruta Malatiti, the Olympic champion on the 100 meters breaststroke. So, these two girls are trying their look at 100 meters backstroke, but all eyes will be on lane four, Elizabeth Simmons from the Bath University. Who has a point to prove, I think. There's no lane five, Sean McKenzie is not with us. So uh, that one is scratched. I think Lizzie Simmons 
is a woman on a mission. She had, uh, by her own admission, not a great 2013, got overlooked for the teams, didn't represent GB for the first time in well, a decade nearly, and, and I think that hurt. I think that's smart. She changed between Loughborough and Bath and things like that, so she had a rather disorientating year, I think, it's best to say for Lizzie Simmons, but I think she is so purposeful and so determined that this is going to be a year she turns things around. Yeah, that's right. In 2012, she came fourth in the 200 metres backstroke at the Olympic Games, and then she moved coach moved obviously going to the University of Bath from Loughborough and it was a disruptive year uh, it didn't quite go her way now she's lost her funding so she's going to be fighting to get that back and fighting to get her place back on the team and she's got an incredibly tough job to do to get under the nom nomination time for Team England but she is a, a woman on a mission and it certainly is showing here in the heat number five well she's a bit too close to the lane road for my liking but nonetheless she's not affecting her swim too much this morning uh, one oh Oh, 99, so nearly a 101, but it's 60.99, fastest by quite some way this morning. Rachel Williams in second place, Rebecca Turner with a 102.86 for her, so uh, 60.99 for Lizzie Simmons. Just a little bit close to that lane rope for my life. It's, it's a problem that Lizzie's had for you know, all of her career. Uh, she, she likes to be close to the lane, right, lane line. It's all right being close to it, but as soon as you touch it, all that... Or that, that you know, going into the lane road is going to slow you down, and that's certainly what you, you don't want. And Lizzie, some, some of her best races has been when Lizzie's been bouncing off the lane ropes. And you just think, how much faster would you have gone if you hadn't zigzagged down the lane and also crashed into and lost all your momentum by touching the lane ropes? Well, that will never know, but uh, I'm sure they're, they're trying to alter that in her swim, but uh, it's an old dog, new tricks, isn't it? With her, she's been around a long time, she's pretty much always swam that way. Clubs involved here. Best city of Salford, Warrington, Stockport, City of Manchester Aquatics, Ealing, Loughborough, and City of Cardiff. Lauren Quigley, a Stockport Metro, is uh, one of our emerging talents. Some people who uh, is advice I take uh, readily and accept uh, on face value. Reckon that Lauren Quigley could be one of our medalists when it comes to the next Olympic Games in Rio. And she certainly has the talent and she certainly has the work ethic to go along it. And you know, who, who would bet against Sean Kelly? Produced so many Olympic medalists over the years, including Kerry Ann Payne, the 10K, silver medalist. And this is a new wave of, of talent coming through in British swimming. We've talked a lot about it already. And Lauren is, is certainly in that bracket. Well, Liz Simmons went under 30 at the split, so too has Lauren Quigley, 29.52 for her. Ekaterina Avramova, again, an overseas swimmer, so she won't be able to do the final, so she has to do it all in the heat and the semi-final, but this is impressive stuff for Lauren Quigley. And again, she looks visibly like she's not going flat out here, she's just doing what she has to do, and still is going to post a very good time, around about the 101 mark, 106 indeed, under the 61, so second fastest of the morning there for Lauren Quigley, who, to me, is just not, not, even, not even puffing, not really blowing at all. I think that was a very comfortable swim. Yeah, you can visibly see her switch off around about 70 metres. Her stroke rate really dropped down, and she started to go a little bit lower in the water, which indicates that she has you know, dropped that stroke rate down, and she just, I can see, doesn't look out of breath. Fantastic swim. She did a really good 200 metres freestyle last night, or yesterday, going two minutes. And that's not her main event. So, you know, she's looking in good form, as are the whole of the Stockport lot. And that'll be an interesting final tomorrow night. We've still got one heat to go. And it's quite a stacked heat with Jessica Fuller Love in lane number five and Georgia Davis in lane number four. Yeah, Georgia Davis in four is ranked 11 in the world currently. We'll be looking to improve upon the time that she did of 60.45 in Marseille. She'll be looking to get in around the 60 second mark probably not this morning semi-finals tonight is when she'll up the pace a little bit and of course the final tomorrow night but uh, she knows that Lizzie Simmons is a, a real battler and uh, very tenacious and she won't uh, take a win here for granted let's see what she does in terms of uh, 
getting herself in the mix for the semi-finals tonight. She goes in four. Jessica Fuller Love of City of Manchester in five. We don't have a six, by the way. We've uh, lost a swimmer there. And Natasha Hofton goes in three. But all eyes, as far as I'm concerned, are on lane four. See what Georgia Davis can do. Maybe we've had two sub-30 splits in the previous two heats. Is she going to go sub-30 on the first 50? Certainly expected to. She normally goes out fast down that first 50 metres. She's also a 50 metre specialist. She'll be representing Wales in the Commonwealth Games in 12 weeks' time. Already pre selected for that competition. So, this is another one of those swimmers that are going to be coming here just to iron out a few of the things they've been working on over the winter months. And she turns in 29.32, so the fastest of the, the three heats so far. And again, visibly just starting to, to sw switch off. Yeah, she and Jessica full up. She'll want to win this, though. She won't want to get beaten. So even though she is switching off, she's got enough in the tank to bring in a 60.85. So that is the second fastest time of the morning. Just a little bit quicker than Lauren Quigley, but as, as we saw, both she and Lauren Quigley, and previous to that, Lizzie Simmons, all really switching off right at the end, and all around the 60-point uh, mark. 60.85 for Georgia Davis, Jessica Fuller of 101.47, and Natasha Hofton 103.13. So three groups very closely together. It's going to make it very interesting for the semi-finals later on, and of course the final of this competition, which takes place tomorrow. Night. So, Kerry Ann, interesting to talk about Georgia Davies there yeah. because she's had the move, hasn't she, from Swansea to, to Loughborough and quite a few changes in her life. How's it sort of worked for her in that respect? So, she's she's moved from uh, from Bud McAllister, who was um, in Swansea, and now she's in, in Loughborough with James Gibson. So, she's moved from um, a predominantly distance based program to a sprint program. And um, she told me that last summer at the World Championships, she weighed about 57 kilograms. And and now she weighs around about 64, and that is all wow. muscle. Her skin fold is lower than it was. So now that she's moved to a sprint program, she's actually doing a lot more gym. She's doing a really specific gym program. And her putting that muscle on has made a really big difference for her in the hundreds because she was a 50 specialist, and that's where she used to, that's where she used to just have her thing, and that's how she used to do really well. But now she's really starting to back up those, those great 50s with a really world-class hundred, and even stronger than uh, than last year, which yeah. is incredible. You know, seven kilograms of muscle. I know, it's, amazing. it's quite a lot and yeah. decrease of body fat as well. Now, what's the, the selection process, the Welsh selection yeah. process? Because that differs, doesn't it, to the... Yeah, it does. So the Welsh uh, qualification process, they had a, a benchmark meet last year, which is either the World Championships or the US Open. So seven people were, had qualified. They went under the times at either one of those two meets. This is the second phase of their qualification, which is this meet. So anybody that goes under those times, I think, are automatically kind of qualified as opposed to nominations like it is for Scottish and, right. and for the English um, and then there is a top-up event again in uh, at the Cardiff International Meet in June. Wow okay well we're going to move on now to the men's 400 meter individual medley heats. Which we have five. First one contains six swimmers. I'll name them for you. We can see them on the screen. I'll tell you where they're from after we get this one underway. Looks like we've uh, lost Joel Knight. So we've actually physically lost him. I think he's just decided not to swim. Uh, Joel O'Halloran of Devonside in two. Thomas Slater of Excel in three. Jordan Hughes of Swansea University is in four. Six is James Rowe of the city of Newcastle. And that swims. Ben Evans goes in heat number one. So just explain to the uninitiated. I'm sure there's a few tuning in what the IM consists of, Ross. Yep, so we're starting off on the front, 100 metres of butterfly before turning on to the back. 100 metres of backstroke, then back onto the front for the breaststroke, and then finishing it off with 100 metres freestyle. One of the hardest events in the programme, not only because it is 400 metres long, so they'll be swimming for around about four minutes. Well, the, the top guys will be four minutes 10, and these guys will be around about four minutes 25. Uh, these guys, or four minutes 30, should I say. But it's the way that they keep having to change disciplines. So they've got to be good at backstroke, they've got to be good at breaststroke, they've got to be good at front crawl, and also they've got to be good at butterfly to get out in that opening 100 metres. But it's also an event that can change every single stroke. 
And if one swimmer's got a really good backstroke, it will really target that event. But normally we see the people with the better breaststrokers are the ones that are doing really, really well. And they kind of come flying through the field at the halfway mark as soon as they've turned onto the front and onto the breaststroke. And if you've got a good breaststroke, you tend to have a half-decent IM. I can hear Kerry Ann Payne in our studio snorty way going, oh, I do 10K, I do 1500. 400 is nothing. Pa! <laughs> Kerry Ann also does this event as well, so, uh, you know, she's, uh, you know, she likes the pain. Her name is Kerry Ann Payne, so. <laughs> yeah, name, uh, pain by name, pain by nature. Right, on to what's happening here. We're getting towards halfway. This is the conclusion of the backstroke leg. And Ben Evans is having the better of this for Thanet Swim. James Rowe in second for Newcastle. And Jordan Hughes of Swansea will be third. The gap, which is uh, at the moment 0.91. But we always say, and that's a bit cliched now, but uh, it's worth pointing out that the breaststroke leg is the one that separates everybody out. And you might be third or fourth at the turn after the backstroke, but this is where you can really make up ground. You certainly can. You do need to be in the mix, though. Um, but yeah, this is where you can make up ground or you can actually break the rest of the field on the breaststroke leg. You know, when you're looking at the world-class swimmers, they don't have a weak breaststroke. All their strokes are very, very strong and very equal. They might have one they prefer. Sorry, the Michael, Michael Phelps had quite a weak breaststroke initially, and that was something they worked on very hard. So his breaststroke got to be very good, but oddly, for somebody who was so dominant in the IM, it was the breaststroke. It was actually his weakest stroke. It was his weakest stroke, but he was also in the top ten in the world for the 200 meters breaststroke. So, yes, he, yes, it was weak, but it was weak by his standard because he was number one in the rest of the events. But you know, in, in terms of the rest of the world, he, he also had a world-class 200 meters breaststroke in, in his locker. So, conclusion of the breaststroke leg, and Jordan Hughes, it is at the front of the field lane. Forcer has changed around a little bit. Trying to go with him is Tom Slater in three, ready for the freestyle the start. Of course, freestyle can be anything, but uh, the faster stroke is the front crawl. And it'll be that that Jordan Hughes goes to now. Tom Slater in second place, and the race for third place is absolutely locked together. Ben Evans, Joel O'Halloran, and uh, James Rowe all in that mix, but it is lane four, Jordan Hughes, who is going to be setting the pace and looks to be uh, visibly pulling away a little bit. The gap wasn't huge with 100 to go. It's going to be much, much bigger with 50 to go. And it looks like uh, Jordan Hughes has nailed the first heat of the 400 IM. Yeah, he looks very, very strong here. Looks like he's got a very good freestyle leg. And he's now starting to move away from the rest of the field. He's got 35 metres to go. And it does look like he is going to claim this first heat. He just finishes it off over the last 25 metres. He's got an entry time of 3.39.00, so that'll be the time he'll be wanting to beat. Do it again. You keep knocking a minute off people's times here. So it is four, not three. I was thinking of my own time, sorry, but <laughs> yeah, you were so good at the 400 AM. I remember, I remember that day. So 4.39.00 was his entry time, and he has now just gone 4.38.49. So half a second PB for Jordan Hughes in the opening heat of the men's 400 metres IM. I mean, if Michael Phelps can't do a 3.40. The best one in the world. Uh, so, yeah, it is uh, Jordan Hughes, Thomas Slater, and James Rowe, one, two, three, separating the end by about two seconds. <whistles> On to heat number two of the men's 400 metres individual medley. Just checking everybody is present and correct this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where my counting comes to an end. I don't go much further than that. They are all in position, all ready to go for the butterfly leg of the 400 IM. A really good start by William Harrison of Bath in lane three. I think they've been working on his start, so because that was a, a very good start. He hasn't really capitalised on that because suddenly, suddenly, Kyriakos Papa Adams has uh, moved to the four. So it's, it's a long way to go. It's a good job there's no more swimmers in this heat, or you'll have to take your shoes off, Bob. <laughs> you don't, I thought you cope with the smell, quite frankly. <laughs> Jarvis Parkinson at the 50 leads by half a second. Of course, at this stage, that's nothing because uh, we're going to transform this from uh, butterfly into backstroke very soon. And then uh, the Beaches Brook of the 400 IM is the breaststroke. It's the one where you can come a cropper. 
and uh, we've seen plenty of swimmers who uh, legs one, two and four look very good, but uh, it's the third leg that lets them down. On this one at the moment, Jarvis Parkinson's having a, a good first hundred on the fly, not the greatest of... Uh, Finishes on that leg though, 1 0, 0 51. William Harrison, who got off to a great start for Bath, is in second at that 100 split. And third is Jake Tyson, a bit of switch in lane one. It's interesting because the sprinters think that their events are all, always the hardest, and the long distance swimmers think their events are always the hardest. And they, they have the arguments on the, on the team, on the British team, who actually does the hardest event. And you know, Fran House also claimed that the 50 metre freestyle is one of the hardest events on the programme because if you make one mistake, you're out of the game. But then someone like Kerry Ann Payne will say the 10K is the hardest event because you're swimming for two hours. So well, it's I'll interesting. Go, I'll go with Kerry Ann on that. I think if you're swimming for two hours and you're involved in a boxing match most of the time, I think that's a little bit more physically demanding, don't you? Well, as a 200 metre swimmer, I stay out of it. I'm not, yes. I'm not yeah. ever going to do a 10k, so yeah, yeah. that probably just proves that I think the 10k is the hardest. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah I think even Fran Hauser would not dispute the 10k is a lot harder than doing a 25 second race, to be honest, but there you go. Halfway stage for Jarvis Parkinson, 2.08.67. He leads by about a second and a half for William Harrison. And third is Luke Toss at 2.08.67. Now, here comes the breaststroke. He's got quite a sizable advantage as Jarvis over the rest. Let's see if anybody can eat into it on the breaststroke. Most likely to do it would seem to be uh, Luke Thomas in sevens going well on the breaststroke. Yeah, but this one in lane number four, Jarvis. Parkinson looks like he has actually got a very good breaststroke and he looks like he's extending his lead over the rest of the field. But out in lane number seven is Luke Thomas from Wickham District. Looks like he's now starting to move up into second place. Big gap between first and second, though, at the uh, 50 split of the breaststroke. Luke Thomas is some four and a half seconds behind Jarvis Parkinson. William Harrison has slipped back from second to third on the breaststroke, but this is a very, very dominant race by the man at the front of the field. Jarvis Parkinson looking very, very good indeed. I think you really are seeing from Luke Thomas that the difference a breaststroke leg can make. He's pulled himself up from nowhere and now is clearly second in this race. Still a long way behind the winner, but he really has pulled himself up into contention to, to get the second place. He's not going to catch Parkinson from Doncaster Darts over this last 100 metres. He really has had an excellent breaststroke leg. Well, 4.36 entry time for him, so be looking to eat into that. This is a very, very impressive swim. The last three strokes have uh, been very dominant for him. Luke Thomas is trying to keep track of him in second place, but uh, Jarvis Parkinson, again, as he did for a while on the breaststroke, is going away on the freestyle. Really split open this field, and Jarvis Parkinson of Doncaster Darts is looking in uh, very, very impressive form indeed. Just 50 more to go for him, 3.58.58, and I think we're going to look at a sizable PB here, aren't we, Ross? We well, certainly are. He's got an entry time of 4.36.88. We expect him to go probably a good five seconds, five, six, seven seconds quicker than that, which will be an excellent return for his morning's work. Well, I hope he doesn't ease up because... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, five-second PB would be uh, very impressive. 4.36, do you know what's going to be more than that if he, get, if he cracks on here? 4.36, 4.27, 4.28, 4.29, Make that seven-second PB in the end for Jarvis Parkinson. That's an immense... He's looking back at the clock and going, is that me? Did I just do that? You did. <laughs> Luke Thomas, 4.35.79, and Thomas McLagan in third, 4.37.40. That's, that's, I think, probably of swimmers of this pedigree, the biggest PB we've seen this week. Yeah, and he, he dominated. He wasn't leading out the first 50, but as soon as he pushed off with 350 metres to go, he led the whole way, and his lead just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's rewarded with a seven-second PB. As we know, the home of uh, swimming is South Yorkshire. And uh, if it's not Sheffield, it's Doncaster. So the 400 metres individual medley heat number three, Ryan Brown of Best in one, Stuart McIntosh of City of Aberdeen in two, Oh, Vashenko of City of Coventry is in three, Alistair Miley, who is the uh, brother of Hannah goes in lane number four. 
Oliver Jeremy of Hamilton Waterlooville in five. Joe Litchfield of Doncaster Darts in six. Axe Dunker had a very good swim yesterday. Goes to Prescott in seven. And Chris Lowther of City of Glasgow is in eight. We actually have lost lane three, but we do still have Aston Miley, who, surprisingly enough, is also doing the 400 m just like his sister does. Yeah, you'd have thought after seeing Hannah do so many 400 medleys, he would have picked a different event, probably the 50 freestyle. Uh, but no, following in her, her footsteps, doing the 400 medley. In lane number seven, Alex Dunk had a fantastic 200 metres freestyle this morning. Going 150 points. So he's now trying to back it up in the same session to do another difficult event in the 400 medley. But it is. Alistair Miley is turning first in one minute, point one four. Got a better butterfly than his uh, daughter, his daughter, his uh, sister has. Definitely, that's one of her weaker events. It, it, interesting with Hannah that gradually her strokes get better during the IM. She starts probably with the weakest and pushes with the strongest. Well, it looks like his butterfly is not too shabby. Yeah, it looks like he's very, very strong out in the middle lane. He's got a little bit of competition out in lane number two. Yeah, the race, as ever, will change complexion and formation during the course of the four and a half minutes or so of this one. Aston Miley, though, is still leading, 134.51 at that turn. Stuart McIntosh of City Aberdeen in second, and Joe Litchfield of Dogs the Dart in third as they come towards the halfway stage and the conclusion of the backstroke. And uh, it's all looking very calm and composed and very much under control for Alistair Miley in lane number four. Probably has but got two, three, yeah, about three or four body lengths advantage at the halfway stage. It looks incredibly smooth. It's very, very strong backstroke. And these swimmers would have seen that Jarvis Parkinson from Doncaster Darts in the heat before has just gone faster than their entry time. So if they want to be the fastest qualifier of the morning after this heat. They need to go faster than they've ever done in their life before. Well, that's still looking to go sub 4.30 for the first time. And uh, if he carries on at this kind of pace, then he'll be certainly in that ballpark. He's not relenting on this one. The rest are all trying to catch him up. There's a decent battle going on for second place between Joe Litchfield and Alex Dunk in lane six and seven. But it's still Aston Miley leading. And it looks like he's going to have led uh, every turn so far. Led on the butterfly turns, led on the backstroke turns, is leading on that one and is dominating the race. But we're keeping an eye on lane number two because suddenly Stuart McIntosh of City of Aberdeen is really making a move and actually could be alongside Aston Miley when they get to the next turn. Yeah, it looks like Alice still has a metre or two advantage over Stuart in lane number two. But McIntosh has made a move on that breaststroke leg. Looks like he's starting to fade McIntosh over the last 10 metres. And Alistair Miley is finishing it very, very strong. Now going on to the freestyle leg. Let's see what these boys have got. See if Stuart can catch Alistair. Well, he hasn't been sub 4.30 before. He's going to be massively inside 4.30 here because there's going to, if he does a 63 last 100, which he won't, that would still be 4.30. So we're looking at another huge PB here. Yeah, looking for a, going under that 4.30 mark. And it's going to be interesting to see who can finish this off, but it looks like it is going to be Alistair Miley. Very, very smooth technique. All four strokes, incredibly smooth. Got 29.4 uh, to come back in to go under that 4.30 mark. Second is Stuart McIntosh still. Joe Litchfield in third and Alex Dunk in fourth. Now, I wonder whether the uh, first three legs have taken a toll a little bit on Aston Miley. It still looks to have quite a good rhythm. Still seems to have quite a bit in reserve, but they are coming back at him. Joe Litchfield and Alex Dunk on the far side. Come on, 4.30, you're not going to make it. He's not going to make the 4.30. Probably expended a bit too much energy on the uh, first three legs because of 4.31.39. That's the kind of time that um, Hannah would be doing. In fact, that, that's pretty much a British record, isn't it? It'd be interesting to see. I actually think that probably is right bang on Hannah Marley's British record. Yeah, let's look at that. But it, it, I've got to say, 31.3 actually does ring a bell. I think it is that. So. Uh, trying to replicate Hannah's performance. He's uh, just about done that. On to heat number four of the men's IM. 
and uh, people willing to lay down a marker here. Maybe it's straight to final for this, so only top eight qualify for later on today when the final takes place. So there is no hanging around, as we saw with uh, young Miley. You really have to go for it, and you might hurt quite badly at the end, but uh, there's no saving stuff up for later, because there may not be a later for you if you don't put it all in in the morning. We have Ricky Morris of City of Coventry in one, Thomas Payne of Manchester in two, Max Litchfield of City of Sheffield in three, Lewis Smith of University of Stirling in four, Matt Johnson of Bath University in five, Chris Suggett of Swansea in six, Fabian Whitbread of Oxford in seven, and Mark Zaranek of Carnegie in lane eight. So Hannah Miley's British record is 4.31.33 and Alice Miley has just gone 4.31.39. So pretty much it's exactly on. hundreds. <laughs> but Alice has been quicker, so he is quicker than his sister. But this is the start of the big boys. Lewis Smith represented Scotland in the last Commonwealth Games for this event. Fastest Britain in the world as well at the moment, 4.16.28. But uh, there'll be plenty of others who'll be wanting to go considerably quicker than that, including Matt Johnson. Now, we know what a great junior he is. I'm waiting to see whether he can make that leap up, that step up required. We've seen so many good juniors over the years who've not managed to consolidate that and move into the senior sphere. And they'll always be remembered as good juniors and nothing more. And I think Matt Johnson has a bit more about him than that. But he has to prove it because this is a stacked event from a GB point of view. There's a lot of very good swimmers in here. We'll see Roberto Favoni, our Olympian, one of our Olympians from uh, 2012, very shortly. But if uh, Matt Johnson wants to move up into that kind of sphere, he has to be changing the kind of times Roberto Favoni has been doing. He says he does. Matthew Johnson finished his junior career last year. At the European Juniors, and now this is his first year trying to make that transition into the seniors. He's moved now from the city of Sheffield to the University of Bath. So, you know, it will take him time to, to get into that senior senior program, but he's at the right place to do it. He's got the right attitude. He is a workhorse. He never, ever gives up. But the minute, you know, he's just trying to tr transition into the senior and having that move into a different program. So he's getting used to things at the minute, but he is, and he is certainly never gives up and he'll always give 100%, which is great to see. Well, Lewis Smith at the moment backing up exactly what he did at the Scottish Nationals last week, the 4 16 28. A week ago he was doing that. Now, Matt Johnson normally comes pretty strong at the back end, but uh, alongside him, Chris Suggett's having a good swim in lane number six, and in the outside lane, Mark Zaranek of Carnegie. So they're pretty well spread here. It's difficult to know exactly where the target to look for is because uh, right across the pool, there's people having good swims here. At that turn, Lewis Smith, 2.42.26. Second is Max Litchfield of Sheffield. Third is Chris Suggett, and Matt Johnson is in fourth. Now, remember, only top eight qualify here, so you, uh, Matt's going to have to get a little move on because he's back in fourth place. Yeah, you really do want to be finishing first and second in this heat if you want to make it the final later on. Been really impressed with Max Litchfield so far this week. He's moved from Doncaster Darts to City of Sheffield last year. And first time under 350 in the 400 metres freestyle last night. And that's a, a fast time. So expect Max Litchfield to come back strong over Lewis Smith. Lewis Smith does have a couple of metres advantage with 75 metres to go. But never, ever rule out Max Litchfield, especially with that strong freestyle leg. Well, his best is 4.21, but again, he's going to go quicker than that this morning. Now, this is where, on oh, the freestyle, Matt's going to make a move because uh, time is running out, metres are running out. Lewis Smith, Max Litchfield, then Chris Suggett. Matt Johnson has given himself an awful lot to do here. He's certainly not going to finish in the top two. He might just get into third place. He's working very hard to overtake Chris Suggett. We'll look at the front of the race. Lewis Smith is likely to win it. Mark Zaranek and the outside lane is now not in the picture, but Max Litchfield most definitely is for City of Sheffield. And this is going to be a good time. This is going to be a personal best for him. 4.19.92, the winning time for Lewis Smith. Litchfield in second, 4.20.33. New PB. Matt Johnson does get third, but he's going to have to wait. 4.23.08 may not be good enough. Fourth is Chris Suggett, 4.23.75. An agonizing wait here for Matt Johnson to see if he's made the final. I think the top two are relatively comfortable and should progress to the final tonight. Actually, with that time and that place, I do expect Matthew Johnson to be making the final. 
with one heat to go. He's third, so six people will have to go quicker than that, and I don't think they will do. But a great swim from Max Litchfield. 420.35, new personal best. Lewis Smith doing what he had to do, 419. That has an entry time and it's a personal best of 4.15, so it's a little bit off that. But he won the heat and he will be into the final later on this evening. Next race has two of our Olympians in adjoining lanes. Roberto Pavoni did the 400 IM in London. Tom Hatfield in five did the 400 IM in Beijing. That was our first swimmer in the pool in Beijing. And uh, he's looking to try and, in a way, get his career back on track. He's had a, a difficult few years. He's obviously seen other swimmers come past him in terms of the likes of Joe Roebuck, who's now not doing the 400 IM, just as a 200 IM now, and Roberto Pavoni. And, of course, Matt Johnson is uh, the man in waiting, Lewis Smith as well, still doing some very good times. Let's see what Tom Hatfield can do here. Let's see more to the point what Roberto Pavoni can do, leading Adam Harrington by a third of a second at the first turn. So Adam Harrington and Ta uh, Roberto Pavoni, training partners at Loughborough University with Kevin Renshaw. And this is, this is one of the events where you can actually see that Thomas Hatfield doesn't have a great butterfly leg, but he does always come strong. But what we'll say about Tom is he's already qualified for the Commonwealth Games for Wales, so he won't be rested, he won't be shaved for this competition, so you don't expect him to be on form. But Roberto Pavoni looks very, very strong, going out in 57.62, already got a commanding lead over the rest of the field. He's just had a look at the time on the board. He'll be happy with what he sees. As we saw at the beginning of the session, if you were with us, Dad is here, as he nearly always is when Robbie is swimming. Let's see how animated he gets today. Probably not until the final, because I think he knows it'll be a fairly comfortable qualification for Robbie. He's been working very, very hard. Disappointed with his performance at London 2012. Really thought he could make a final. I think a lot of us did. Didn't quite make it on that occasion. And uh, I just feel there's a, a big swim in Robbie still to come. And he's having a big swim here. He's leading everybody else by two seconds on the backstroke leg. And how strong is his breaststroke? His breaststroke is strong as well. Very, very strong. Um, and I think what the, the pleasing thing about him and, and what you know, certainly is, uh, is great is that he is another workhorse. He always gives 100%. If you give him another set at the end of a set, he'll do it. You know, it's, it's not, uh, he doesn't whinge or moan about it. Whatever the coach says, he will do to the best of his, his ability. And it certainly does show out onto the pool. Yeah, I like to look at the breaststroke. Adam Harrington's looks all right, too, on the far side of the pool in lane eight. And uh, we're seeing Ross Muir come back strongly for University of Stirling. This should also be where Tom Hatfield makes a little bit of a move in lane five. But uh, nobody at the moment seemingly is going to get anywhere near Roberto Pavoni. Though Adam Harrington and Loughborough, obviously uh, both at the same club, is trying very hard to whittle that lead down. Let's see how big it is now. I see visibly it's still quite big. And also going nicely is Ross Muir, who's uh, moved up into second place now. But the cap is 3.74 seconds, which is immense in a heat like this. That's a reverse Pavoni. We'll be uh, considering anybody else in other lanes, just thinking about the time and hoping, if he can, to be the fastest qualifier. Yeah, I'm sure he will be. He's looking very, very smooth. Ross Merritt in lane number three has had a very strong breaststroke leg, overtaken Adam Harrington out in lane number eight. Adam's got to keep in that top three, try and finish it off with a strong freestyle leg. But it doesn't look like anybody's going to be catching Roberto Pavoni over this freestyle leg. Gaps down, it was over three minutes, well over three minutes, three minutes, three seconds at last time they turned, but Ross Muir has uh, trimmed that down to 2.41. Onto the freestyle leg they go, but uh, Roberto Pavoni has done what he needs to do to win this fairly conclusively. We we'll need to bust a gut because he knows that the uh, job is very well done, just uh, needs to get a top eight place. Will probably be the fastest, so Lewis Smith uh, put a decent marker down at uh, 4.19. 3.49, yeah, it looks like Robbie's going to come back in a 30 and be thereabouts for a 4.19 as well. Yeah, not, not particularly quick heat, the final heat. Looks like the, the second-to-last heat would be a little bit quicker than this. 
So expect the first three of these guys to be making the final later on. And Roberto Pavoni has just literally switched off and is cruising down to the final 10 metres as easy as pie. Yeah, so we have 420 or thereabouts, 421, 28. So won it by a second and a half. Could have won it by pretty much as much as he wanted on this occasion, but saving a little bit in reserve. Oh, quite a bit in reserve actually on the basis of that. 421. 28, not the fastest heat of the morning. That's Lewis Smith with the best time. We need to do something about those goggles. It seems like he's got panda eyes now. <laughs> As a Roberto. And here's the clarification and confirmation of uh, the times. Just waiting for... In fact, we can't give you that at the moment because they're still looking at something. Oh, here we go. 4.22.74 for Ross Muir. Tom Hatfield, 4.25. Adam Harrington, 4.25.79. So, uh, although it was only a small margin in the end, a conclusive victory for Roberto Pavoni with the second fastest time of the morning. So, Roberto Pavoni there having a nice steady last mm -hmm. hundred that yeah. was almost relaxing to watch and that glide <laughs> into the wall there was the, the longest glide we've seen so far this week Can yeah we? i think he's done a, a really good job there he he went out pretty hard at the beginning he wanted to kind of make his mark probably had a few things that he was trying to work on um it's quite interesting that uh, roberto actually breathes to the side when he when he does his butterfly stroke i think it's generally a, a preference thing so he feels comfortable breathing that way so that's how how he breathes but i mean all of his strokes were great he had a really good chance this morning to work on all of his turns as well so tonight he'll just be sharpening up those things and to know that he still has a really great last 100 to do because that was such an easy last 100 because <laughs> he just sort of did what he has to do for this evening yeah. but interestingly enough the last six months have been quite interesting for his training hasn't it yeah so um roberto's been up to altitude quite a lot this season actually so he's been up to sierra nevada in spain um which is around about just well it's over 3,000 feet and um he did that early season came back down the mountain and then he went straight to the world cup circuit and he raced there, swam really well, and then did the same again. Um, and then his last race was down here, actually at this pool for the jewel in the pool, and he did such a great PB yeah. in that. And you said earlier you've been to the same training camp at yes. altitude. <laughs> you said it's not easy, is it? No, it really isn't. Like brushing your teeth is really difficult. Walking up the stairs is really difficult. Swimming as well. And that's you know the first four or five days you just have to swim easy. There's nothing else that you can do, and you just have to deal with when you get up in the morning. Your heart rate is already 20 beats higher. Yeah. So that's obviously stood him in. in great stead so we might talk about that a little bit more later on but we're going to move on now to the women's s8 100 meter freestyle heats only the one and uh here shepherd goes in three stephanie slater in four and susanna rogers two of our uh, paralympians going in four and five Very bright girl is Susie Rogers. Always uh, engaging. We have a chat to her. She's uh, got so many interests outside the pool. So make sure she ever finds time to do what she needs to do in terms of preparation to swim. It's only at this level, but uh, she is a really good performer on a regular basis, is Susie Rogers. And it's the 100 meters freestyle. So the big event for our Paralympic swimmers comes next week in Glasgow, the qualification event for the Commonwealth Games. So Kira Shepherd of Swim West Midlands in three. Stanley Slater of Preston in four. Susie Rogers in five. So Stephanie Slater and Susie Rogers with uh, lots and lots of European World and Paralympic medals to their credit. Know each other's style, know each other's strokes, know each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. And uh, Stephanie Slater looking to exploit that in lane number four for Preston. She's gone out very strongly and she will be leading at the turn. She certainly is leading at the turn. 1.41 seconds advantage. And that lead is increasing by every arm pull. Well, 
that lead is not being eaten into by the Kira Shepherd to her left hand side. In fact, she's now starting to slip back off the pace. Susie Rogers coming strong in the second 50, but nowhere near as strongly as Stephanie Stater has performed here. And uh, with just that one arm to maneuver. A lot of leg kick to get her through the water for the time 107.33. And that is a new personal best, sizable one too for her in first place. Second place to Susie Rogers and third to Stephanie Slater. That's a huge improvement on her, on her entry time. She entered in on a 111.13 and she's just gone and smashed that by nearly four seconds. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? If you ever do that in a heat, 107.33 then, with Susie Rogers coming in at 112.39, Kira Shepherd finishing in 115.17. So that was a strong swim there from Stephanie Slater. Yeah, really good. So like a four-second PB in the heat as well. It'll be really interesting to see what she can do tonight. And it's great to see such a PB when you're out there in front uh, and, and to get a, a time like that is great, isn't it? Yeah, well, she was really working against the clock then um, and Stephanie just had to make sure that she put her head down and did the swim that she wanted to do this morning and she looked like she really wanted to get a good time and that's exactly what she did. Well, can you believe we finished this morning's session? It's gone a little bit too quickly, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, but that's great. Quick is always good at the British Swimming Championships. Who are you looking out for this evening, Kerry ann Because we've got some great finals tonight. Yeah, well, tonight there's so many people. We have um, James Guy in the four, and sorry, in the 200 freestyle. I can't wait to see him swim and maybe break Ross's uh, uh, English record. Sorry, sorry. Ross. <laughs> sorry, sorry Ross. it might happen. Not and that we want it to, no. but we kind of do, so it's a little bit awkward, but yeah. never mind. And then we have the, the return of Liam Tancock in that 100 yeah. um, backstroke Will final. shaved his beard off? I hope he has shaved his beard off. Yeah. Well, ho hopefully he hasn't got a little moustache, that would be really bad. Yeah, because he's kind of going down <laughs> in stages, yeah. so hopefully it's not, yeah. And then we've also got um, Adam PT. so I know that it's a semi-final tonight of that 100 breaststroke, but I think he's going to do a really quick time tonight, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I'm um, really also looking forward to, to watching Roberto Pavoni's 400 IM. I think that's going to be a great swim. He had such an easy last 100, so he has so much more to give for tonight's final. And the women swims tonight, Francesca Halsall yeah. as well. She's got a couple of swims tonight. I think she's yeah. got the 100 butterfly, and that's a final, and then she has the, that 50 freestyle. So it'll be really nice to see if she breathes as much tonight or if she takes slightly le less breath or if she tries a completely new stroke again. Who knows what, what Fran's going to do. Yeah, and we, we speak about Fran, another lady in the mix there, Hannah Miley, which she swam <laughs> the events that she really likes last week and she's she's still going strong this week, isn't she? I know, so she's been under the consideration time for the Scottish team for three events, the two and the 400 medley and then the 800 freestyle as well. And when I spoke to her last week and said, how are you getting on, what are you doing this week? She said, well, I'm not going to do the races I did here, but I'm just going to do all the other ones at, at British. So she's doing all of the other races here. So she's pretty much in every single event doing all the different things, just having fun. Yeah, as Bob said earlier in his commentary as well, you know, she just loves it, doesn't she? She would yeah. swim in any event that she possibly could because she's just so talented as yeah. well, isn't she, at everything that she does. Now, later on, we've got interviews with Dawn Peart and, of course, Ross Davenport is going to be joining us for a quick chat um, about all of his up-and-coming events, not in the pool, may I add. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's quite a busy guy. So we'll have a bit of a chat with him later on. But thank you very much for joining us here on the live stream. We'll be back at 10 to 6 tonight. That's 17.50 with all the live action interviews, semi-finals and finals, bringing you the live up-to-date action as it happens. So from us two and myself and Kerry ann Payne, thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you later on at 10 to 6. Thank you.